Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe Dental Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. Please do support my work with your likes, comments and shares and you can join me on Facebook and Instagram through the links given in the description box. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page. Aphthous ulcers, also called recurrent aphthous stomatitis or simply known as canker sore, is a common ulcerative inflammatory condition of the oral cavity. The reported prevalence in the general population varies between 5 to 66 percent. It typically starts in childhood or adolescence as small recurrent round or ovoid ulcers with well-defined erythematous margins and a central yellow or gray floor. The lesions have a recurrent nature, meaning that they are episodic once they appear for the first time in an individual's mouth. The exact cause or etiopathogenesis for aphthous ulcers is unknown. However, it's thought that ulceration might result from a sudden activation of the cell-mediated immune system at the site of ulceration, leading to the liberation of cell-signaling molecules or cytokines like TNF-alpha and some other interleukins. These cytokines cause antigen expression on oral epithelial cells. The oral epithelial cells are then recognized by T lymphocytes which then trigger a cytotoxic response and the epithelial cells are phagocytized by immune cells resulting in ulceration. Some non-triggering agents which can cause the stimulation of such an immune response are listed as minor injury to the inside of the mouth for example from cuts, burns or bites while eating, dental work, hard brushing or ill-fitting dentures. Familial tendency or genetic predisposition, a condition that tends to occur more often in family members than is expected by chance alone. Certain foods and drinks including coffee, acidic or spicy foods. A deficiency of certain vitamins and minerals including zinc, vitamin B12, folate, and iron that may present with anemia. Smoking cessation, allergic reaction to oral bacteria, emotional stress, hormonal changes associated with pregnancy, or having a weakened immune system due to certain chronic conditions. These triggering factors might be different in different groups of people. Individuals might have a single or more than a single triggering cause for the lesions. The three main types of aphthous ulcers are the usual minor and the unusual major and herpetiform variants. Minor aphthous ulcerations are the most common form and represent more than 80% of those affected. Major aphthous ulcerations represent 10% of those affected and the remaining ulcers are represented by the herpetiform variant. Minor aphthous ulcerations are the most common variant and appear with the fewest recurrences and with the shortest duration of time. These are the superficial lesions and appear on the non-keratinized mucosa of the lips and cheeks followed by the mucosa of the soft palate the floor of the mouth and the ventral surface of the tongue. The ulcers are usually less than a centimeter in size and last for about 7 to 10 days and then heals up without scarring. Major aphthous ulcer is less common than the minor type. The lesions as the name suggests are larger. These lesions unlike the minor form are deeper and since they are deep they persist for a longer period, heals with scarring and are more painful. The major aphthous ulcers have the longest duration of all forms of aphthous ulcers and heal up in a period of 2-6 to six weeks. Major ulcers most commonly appear over the lips. Other areas of the mouth might also be affected. The size of the lesion may range between 0.5 cm to several centimeters. The lesions as are extensive might become secondarily infected and in such cases, healing process is further delayed. 
the herpetiform type mostly affects women. This form consists of the greatest number of lesions. The lesions appear as small crops of extremely painful ulcers in the oral mucosa having a size of about 1 to 3 mm in diameter. The lesions might heal in a period of 3 to 7 days. These lesions resemble herpetic ulcers in appearance but unlike herpes ulcers, they do not develop following vesiculation and the lesions do not possess the herpes virus. There is no specific treatment suggested for aphthous ulcers. Symptoms like burning sensation and pain can be relieved with the use of corticosteroids and analgesics. Recurrences of the lesions can be reduced by identifying and avoiding the trigger agents. I hope this video helps. If you think this video was really helpful, please do hit the like button and share the video ahead. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell icon to get notifications on each upcoming video. Plus, if you have got any questions or suggestions, you may write them down in the comment box below. Thank you for watching.